Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Syed Muhammad Abizuddin bin Syed Sakin Sain So today, I will explain to you guys what is my topic My topic is Islamic Banking Contribution to the Malaysian Real Economy So the purpose is, the Malaysians has a well-designed and established Islamic banking system Making it one of Asia's fastest growing economies The Malaysian's economic unique characteristic made in an important case study and the goal of this research is to determine the dynamic contribution of Islamic finance to the real economic school. Next, we must know the introduction of this topic. The relationship between financial activity and economic growth has piqued the curiosity of academics, policy makers and researchers all around the world. The financial industry, particularly the banking sector, may have an impact, impact and economic growth through encouraging investment and increasing capital productivity. So, uh, computer 1911 uh, emphasizes the importance of providing loans to businesses in order to boost economic production, financing in innovative production that needs and intriguing the in, in technology boost productivity. Financing is transferred through the banking system, which involves mobilizing, saving, and disbursing them as loan. Famous economists like Gurley and Ed Shaw, Hicks and Goldsmith agree with Scum Peter, regarding the financial processing, I economic growth and development. Next, I will tell you guys about the content in this article. Malaysia implemented Islamic financial policy in the early 1980s as one of the fastest growing Asian nations with a well-designed and established financial system. For the past 10 years, Malaysia's Islamic financial sector, which comprises Islamic banking, Islamic capital markets, and Takaful, has seen a tremendous growth in terms of operations, asset, and capital. Despite the fact that the Malaysian economy was in recession between 2001 and 2009, the Islamic banking system asset or capital increased dramatically, dramatically from RM 1.8 billion in 2008 to RM 2.4 billion in 2009, signifying a 76% growth uh, which is in Ben Malaysia in 2017. Furthermore, as of December 2019, Islamic banks have set to total RM835.15 billion. This research implied that the Malaysian Islamic finance industry was able to extend credit even during the season, which may have aided the Malaysian economy recovery. Furthermore, Malaysia's gross domestic product, which we call it GDP, has grown in single digit for more than a decade with the exception of 2009, where it grew at a minus 1.80%. Okay, uh, at the below, I have stated a uh, percent, uh, 2007 until 2019, okay? You will see the, the percent. Moreover, the relationship between money and growth. According to Lucas, uh, 1988 is uh, underly uh, overstated the four different sorts of hypotheses are listed below, which is first, Finance causes growth, second is growth leads to financial, Sec uh, third is finance and growth cause uh, each other, and last is uh, finance is not needed in the process of economic growth. Lastly, uh, in the content of this article is, Majid and Kasim in 2009-15 evaluated the impact of Islamic banking and other financial institutions on the Malaysian economy is another study. And ARDL, Bounce Test, VECM, and VDS were used. The study discovered the, that Islamic finance has a sub, substantial impact on the Malaysian economy. Islamic finance and Malaysian economic growth have been found to have uh, an indirectional casual link. Uh, this analysis contradicts uh, Furkani and Mulyani. Conclusion on the causal relationship between Islamic banking and Malaysian's economic growth. The study did not, however, identify the pathway via which Islamic financing transmit growth. After that, Kasim, uh, in 2016, looked into how Islamic banks and Islamic financial markets uh, channel investment into the real economy. Over the period, 
1998 until 2018, the analysis recognized capital accumulation but not capital productivity as a channel for Islamic banking to Tasmanian groups. The study, however, was unclear on the relationship between Islamic banking and economic growth. For the conclusion, the total financing and deposit of Malaysian Islamic banks are utilized as variables in this study to represent Islamic banking. The research spans two two twenty years of data, and two distinct growth channels have been founded. Which is uh, in the capital accumulation and productivity of capital. The method of data analysis is the ARDL framework, which permits the addition of a dependent variable as an explanatory variable and is widely recognized as an adequate time series methodology. This addresses the problems mentioned in prior prior literature reviews, such as the use of incorrect factors. A short time span, a lack of identification of transmission growth channels, and a lack of methodology. These studies finding may be useful for policy recommendation. Okay, for the recommendation, I believe Islamic banks should develop new goods and services to entice more clients to deposit money and obtain short and long term loans. The finding. Show uh, that linking Islamic banks financing to the real economy is a vital condition for economic success. In the long term, the mag- the marginal effect of capital accumulation and TFP are higher than the marginal effect of deposit and financing. According to the conclusion of this study, as a result, BNM should issue a guideline to Islamic bank directing them to allocate more of their Find funding to productive activity rather than pure consumption. In this case, proper monetary policy instruments such as moral su- uh, suasion and di- directive can be developed. This is required in order to maintain long-term GDP growth. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you.